Yo, what is up guys? So we are going to be taking a look at the new Legendary Hero deck. Some of the cards did get revealed during a live stream. The quality of the cards is kind of potato as far as like visuals go, but there is going to be a new Phantom Knight Link monster. There's going to be another Hero Link monster called Extra Hero uh, Dread Decimator. And there's also the new Nordic Ascendant card and uh, essentially on the Sky Dragon, I believe was a prize card at one point, but nonetheless, Let's go ahead and check out some of the new cards, as well as some new Cyber Dragon support, as well as just some other Yu-Gi-Oh! news. But, first off, this card technically is not new, but it is new for the TCG. We don't have this card, but I am sure that uh, a lot of you guys probably don't care about that card too much anyways. But there is a new Link Monster, uh, so this is uh, one of the new Phantom Knights Link Monster. And the name of this card is the Phantom Knights uh, of Rusty Bardshay. So, it is a Link 3. With 2100 attack, its link zones are on the bottom left, bottom right, and on the right. It's a dark monster, and its summoning requirements are going to be uh, 2 plus dark monsters. And uh, anyways, the card effect says, during your main phase, you get to send a Phantom Knight monster from your deck to the graveyard. Then you can set a Phantom Knight spell or trap directly from your deck in your spell and trap zone. And if a dark exceed monster is special summon it to a zone or zones that this card points to while this card is on the field, Except during the damage step, you target one card in the field and destroy it. You can only use each effect of the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardshape once per turn, and it cannot be used as link material, unfortunately. So you can't just summon one, then link up, and then, you know, get that free uh, pot. Now, what's interesting with this is, um, like I mentioned before, the Phantom Knights of Mist Claws is the first time, uh, I believe, we're getting it in the TCG. It is an older card. It came out, like, I don't know, it's 2016? Um... It's it's just not very... It's kind of strange that they're releasing this. And it doesn't even work well with the new card, because what this card does, it lets you target a Banished Phantom Knight's monster and add it to your hand, and then when an opponent's monster clears a direct attack, while this card's also in your graveyard, you target a level 4 lower Phantom Knight and special summon it. Um, uh, you can yeah, target level 4 lower Phantom Knight's in your graveyard and special summon it. If you do, you special summon this card as a normal monster with the same original level. Now, I didn't really see too many people use this, but I just don't like how it has to be a direct attack. If it was just declare an attack, this card could actually work quite well with the new Phantom Knights card, but because it has to be a direct attack, it's just not going to be something I see too many people playing, but again, it's not a card that people played anyways, and this is obviously not going to be helping it in any shape or form, unless you like somehow make the card go away, come back during the same battle phase, but also... Um, this card has the effect, except during the damage step also. I, I just wish that, uh, you know, this card came out a long, long time ago, back when Phantom Knights were super popular. There's also a reprint of Breaksword, which at one point was like a $70 card, but right now it's only like $3 anyways. So, um, that is not too insane stuff over there, but it uh, looks like we're getting some, like, Phantom Knights variant of some, like, starter slash structure deck, and of course, um, the new Legendary Hero deck. But, in addition to that, there's some more new cards, so let's go ahead and go over those as well. Um, next up, we have the uh, reprint uh, Arata version of Disc Commander. Um, if you guys didn't know, it did come off the ban list, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, no one really plays it anyways. Um, and then Extra Hero Wonder Driver, uh, which is the Exceed card. Uh, I don't believe we actually had that in the TCG. Um, let me actually double check on that. Uh, where's the... Oh, what is this? Let's go ahead and let me go ahead and search for this real quick. Um, I don't recall the date that uh, Japan got it. Okay, so it was earlier this year, but it's going to be the first time that we are getting it tactically in the TCG, but uh, that card's old. It's okay. I've made a few videos on it, but uh, the new card is what I'm sure a lot of you guys are more interested in, and that is the Extra Hero Dread Decimator. So let's go ahead and check him out. So he's going to be, I believe, a Link 3, and uh, like I said, the, the quality that they showed the cards at is obviously not as, as crisp as it should be to read the text uh, properly. So we're going to go ahead and read it over here. So anyways, it's a Link 3 Dark Warrior Link Effect Monster with 2500 attack. The Link's bottom left, bottom, and bottom right it requires two hero monsters. And it says, this card also, any hero monster points to gains, is it supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be 100 attack for each hero monster with different names in your graveyard. And if it attacks defense position monster, you get to do piercing. Ooh. I mean, at a minimum, you're going to gain 300, so it's like, I guess, 28-ish at, like, its minimum state. Um, I mean, I don't... That's kind of disappointing. This is the first time I'm reading some of these cards, and I'm just like, dude, that is just way too mediocre. Uh, the Phantom Knights one, to me, is a little bit better, but dang, dude, that's just really unfortunate that... Uh, 
if it was a thousand for each hero, then we're looking at something potentially, like, insane, but, like, I don't know, maybe we get, like, three, four, five heroes, even, even when, like, Mally plays, like, I mean, maybe, like, five heroes, like, 500 attack boost, it's okay, but, like, again, it's not something to make me think, oh, I want to just, I just gotta make this card. Most of the time, I'd rather go into a soul, I'd rather just go into other things versus this card. But who knows, maybe in the right circumstance, just having it there, if you have a grind game and there's, like, 10 plus heroes, and then you get the 1,000 plus attack, and eh, maybe, I don't know. You guys can let me know what your thoughts are on Wonder Driver. I'm uh, not Wonder Driver, sorry. The Dread Decimator, that new hero, Link monster but there's also another one uh coming out in the game which is the noric ascendant link monster now this one the quality i mean the, the good good luck trying to read this card's effect um once it does get released i will give you guys its full effect but in case someone wants to like kind of theory craft you guys can tell you maybe what you think its effect is i mean we've got such a long set of text there but anyways it's a link one with its uh, link zone being in the bottom left and anyways uh it doesn't have its effect uh like here right now because it's illegible because we can't read it it's too small but there is some more support for nordics and i think that they're pretty cheap right now so if you like you know i might think about it maybe some of the cards will go up in price but for the most part i want to say most of the cards probably should be coming in the legendary hero deck anyways but as far as uh um what's inside the hero decks it's going to be three decks per box it reminds me of like the, the one where they had like uh it was like a yugi one and i was like yugi's legendary decks or something like that but Basically, there's three decks in it. I'm guessing it's going to sell for $30. I don't believe it's, if it has been announced. It'll probably be like $30. Oh, $40 if you're on Toys R Us, though, right? But uh, anyways, yeah, that is the Legendary Hero decks. Uh, as far as the information we know right now, once they announce all the reprints, I'll also mention that for you guys. But in addition to that, there are two new Cyber Dragon support cards. And the first one we're going to be taking a look at is the Super Strident Blaze. We tried using it on the live stream, if you guys remember this. It's not very good, though, I'll be honest. The other card is pretty good. But anyways, let's go ahead and check it out. So this is Super Strident Blaze. It's a new equip spell card for Cyber Dragons. And anyways, it says, Equip only to a Machine Fusion Monster. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects during your battle phase. At the end of the damage step, if the equipped monster attacked an opponent's monster, you can banish a Cyber Dragon monster from your graveyard. The equipped monster can attack... An opponent's monster again in a row your other monsters cannot attack the turn you activate this effect so uh, i guess you can attack twice but like i mean if you're just going to go for a power bond like cyber twin like that's game anyways majority of the time um but this effect of like not being able to activate cards during the battle phase maybe um someone can try to use it but like for the most part i would say flip effects and also like graveyard effects um that would like hurt you from ot king and cyber dragon it's not too common in the first place it just if this card was much more free, like, basically, maybe if you, as soon as you equip to a Cyber Dragon, you're going to draw a card. I just don't see running this as an equip card being very viable. Granted, when I was playing and messing around with it, um, I tried to make it viable. It's just, I don't think it's very good. Let me know your thoughts on the Super Strident Blaze down below. But anyways, we've got another new trap card called Cybernetic Revolution. This card is actually really, really good. Um, but anyways, it says you can tribute one Cyber Dragon to special summon one fusion monster from your extra deck that lists a Cyber Dragon monster as material. It cannot attack directly, and is destroyed during the end phase of the next turn. You can only activate one Cybernetic Revolution per turn. So, that's much, much better. Um, you know, the, the downside is it does die, but it lets you prevent yourself from getting OTK'd. Uh, courtesy of just being able to summon monster, like I said, I, I was kind of messing around with it. Uh, by the way, oh, I guess they changed it. Um, don't copy this build, by the way. I was just trying to test out, like, like normally I would not play three copies of, what do you call it, uh, Eternal, uh, Super Strident Blaze is what it's called, but over here it's called, like, I guess, Eternal Evolution Burst. Um, but, anyways, I, I wouldn't recommend playing multiple copies of it. It's just so I, I was gonna try to get you guys gameplay footage, but... So many times, well, like, I'm just like, actually, Parabon, they already know what's happened, so they quit, and I'm like, dude, that doesn't make a good video. But for the most part, I mean, it really just comes down to making a, um, like, a, a Saiger, and then what you're going to be able to do after it goes for a Saiger. If you have the option to potentially activate something like Machine Doop, you summon double of the monsters, then you can go for a Genius, and then that's actually much better, because you can search out level 5 or higher, which can actually be the uh, Star Destroying Kaiju. Uh, then you could potentially go into Infinity, Absorb. There's a lot more plays with Cyber Dragon that I think just outweigh the whole, like, equip. Oh, you can't activate anything during battle phase. Um, 
but it does let you potentially banish one so you can attack again. Um, uh, could, but it only lets you attack an, an, uh, an opponent's monster. It's just like the, it, it, it counteracts what you'd want it to do. Like if it could just attack twice, that would be so big, but it has to actually attack another monster. So that's the downside with uh, the, that's not internal evolution, the super strident blaze. The other card, like I said, was pretty decent. I mean, you're able to go into a lot of the other things. It just prevents you from essentially getting OTK when you like summon like core. Let's say you have like a really big play, um, like whatever small little cyber dragon that you summon, if you don't have options to go into Siger or they negate the veil or whatever the case may be, um, you have access to just going in to just leaving that on the board, then just going into one of these with Cybernetic Revolution. Just make a fusion monster that has like okay attack. Um, maybe you could drop an honest on them too. Uh, but Super Stride and Blaze actually would be quite good with Honest. The reason why is because that attack boost would technically still count. Uh, it's again just not something I would consider very competitive, but it is there as an option. Now there is one more thing I wanted to mention really quick. It's the 200th YCS Judgment. It's just kind of like you Gion use. Uh, it does show the gold sarcophagus. It's just a, a, a bigger and close up picture of the new YCS Judge Mat. If you are a judge, you do get these. Sometimes these are worth a little bit of money. This one's definitely pretty cool. I like it indeed a lot. I think the most like valuable judgment was like that black rose one. But anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts on the new legendary hero decks as well as any of the things that we talked about, whether it's new Cyber Dragon support or whatever. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the vid. If you did, drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, Hit the subscribe button to see more new Yu-Gi-Oh! content as well as Yu-Gi-Oh! news as soon as it gets announced. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. Have a good one. I'm signing out.